Welcome to Caseware Quick Vids. This Quick Vid demonstrates the process of documenting controls in Caseware Audit. This video will provide an overview of controls in Audit and will go through how to add controls using the Control Dialog, as well as how to use the Control Matrix. As part of the engagement process, auditors obtain an understanding of controls and the control environment relevant to the audit determine whether these controls prevent or mitigate assessed risks, and report on any deficiencies. Audit helps you easily record controls, associate them to identified risks and reportable items, and indicate whether the identified risks have been addressed. Controls can be added from any audit-specific document, including work programs and checklists. You can choose to accumulate controls in control matrix documents that allow you to assess their effectiveness in mitigating risk. With some background information on controls and control identification, we will go ahead and document a control. To add a control, open the applicable document. I want to add my control to the work program for cash. With the work program open, click the control icon, represented by a blue circle with a speech bubble. If you do not see the icon, your firm author may have disabled the creation of new controls. Clicking on the button directly will bring you to the control dialog, as will clicking on new control from the drop-down menu. The other options include importing controls from another file or using caseware risk space. In the control dialog, complete the details for the various control attributes using the input fields, checkboxes, and drop-down options. There are five sections to this dialog. Please note the attributes that you are able to configure are based on how your firm has deployed the control attributes. The number and names of the attributes may differ from what you see on screen here. In the Control Documentation section, name and provide a description of the control. In the Financial Statement areas, select one or more areas that are impacted by the identified control then check off the related assertions. The list of financial statement areas and assertions are automatically populated from the Financial Statement Areas Worksheet. Choose the affected business cycles associated with the control. These again are defined in the Financial Statement Areas Worksheet. This will automatically be filled out if the FSA item is already associated with a business cycle. Under Attributes, indicate whether the control is dependent upon other controls, whether it is manual or automatic, and whether it is one that provides reasonable assurance that material errors will be prevented or detected in a timely manner. In the Evaluate Control Environment section, select the supporting working papers and the results of the evaluation. Controls are automatically selected to roll forward, saving you time next year. I will keep this default selection. Under Test of Control, indicate if this control is to be tested or indicate the period in which it was last tested. Tests of Control are used to gather evidence of the operational effectiveness of internal control procedures. It may be appropriate to use audit evidence about the operating effectiveness of controls obtained in previous audits. Provide supporting documents and indicate whether the control is effective. This references the working paper where the test of control is performed. Finally, define any of the associations, whether risks or reportable items, for this identified control. We will look at risks first. To select an associated risk for the control, click on the link icon beside risk. This gives you the options for the association. Here you can create a new risk import a risk, or choose an existing risk by clicking Edit Association. Please refer to the quick vid Documenting Identified Risks or our online help for more information about documenting risks. I am going to choose Edit Association to select my risk, which will be Receipts Not Deposited in this example. Much like the risks, the reportable items can be identified as well. This allows you to quickly identify deficient controls for reporting to management. For more information about documenting reportable items, be sure to refer to our online help and quick vids. Clicking the icon beside reportable item, you have the same options as with risks. 
I'm going to edit the association and choose from an existing item. If at any point you require assistance, click the Help button within the dialog. I have now completed the control dialog and will click OK. As you accumulate controls for your client, you can view, edit, or copy controls in the control matrix. Audit includes control matrix documents 545, 550, 555, and 560, each for a respective business cycle. You can edit these documents or create additional control matrix documents to view controls in a variety of combinations. I will go ahead and open the control matrix for revenues, receivables, receipts. The control matrix provides a quick and useful view of the controls and the associated risks that are prevented or detected. These are viewed either by business cycle or financial statement area. Notice how the control I just added appears in the matrix. You can opt to change the views or categories by using the drop down menu. I will keep mine at Revenues, Receivables, Receipts for now. You may notice some shading on various control procedures. Shading of the control's name highlights how pervasive the control is in addressing the number of risks displayed in the matrix. From fewest to most risk, the colors are white, gray, violet, magenta, scarlet, and bright red. In the example on screen here, filtered by revenue receivables receipts, the sales and accounts receivable report addresses the most risks. The invoice is over $500, addresses the second most number of risks, while all others are not effective. Note what happens when I switch the category to cash and cash equivalents. The risk for the control I added is now higher because there are fewer risks in this category. Another key feature in the control matrix is in the bottom row. This row lists, for each risk factor, whether the control procedures mitigate the risk. The possible responses are yes, y, some, s, and no, n. Keep in mind that while using the control matrix, you have various options available. You can use the document menu to generate the matrix, create new controls, risks, and reportable items, use the options menu to access alternate options, Furthermore, you can use the toolbar options to modify column size and configure the matrix as needed. If you are using a SmartSync environment, this document is automatically set to Sync on Demand. This concludes the quick vid on documenting controls in Caseware Audit. For additional resources, including documentation and online help, see the related links in the video description. Thank you for watching Caseware Quick Vids.